Hello, everybody. Welcome to Vicious RV. We're here at my hometown Coldwater, Michigan store today taking a look at the 294 QBS J Flight. And I, it's been years since I had a chance to actually put one of these on camera. And I'm excited to bring you all the updates and hear what you folks think. Let me know where you think they nailed it. Let me know where you think they failed it. So there's all kinds of different bunk models, but the, the, the role that this one plays within their lineup is that it brings private uh, sleeping spaces into the equation. So no one's like sleeping in the living room. It has a private front bedroom with a sliding pocket door and a private rear uh, bunk room with four individual bunk beds. And that's one of the key things on this floor plan. There's a lot of builders who make something like this with a big camp kitchen, which is cool, but you lose one of the bunks. It's a tri-bunk, not a quad bunk. This one gives you maximum sleeping space in here. Plus, it's a little bit taller inside, has a carpetless slide out, has that big true U dinette. So on a rainy day, if you gotta wrap everybody around the dinette and you're playing Parcheesi, does anybody still play Parcheesi? I don't know, sorry, one of my squirrel moments there. But you get the idea, you've actually got space inside for the family, and since every person has their own individual bed space, no one's like, hey, he's picking on me, he's touching me, unless it's uh, like me and my wife, and she's kind of like, oh, he's touching me, get away. Neither here nor there, though. Uh, enclosed underbelly is a new standard for 2023, um, and, and making a return, of course, are things like the Goodyear Endurance tires and the turn signal safety lighting package. Uh, we are also prepped and ready for side and rear view uh, cameras, and they've revised their camp kitchen on this model this year, and I'm really eager to see what you guys think of that. And that's the kind of thing. I'm going to try to show you the good with the bad. Like, the road mode on this one is a little bit questionable. I'm not sure how some people are... Well, actually, I do think I know how some people are going to feel about the bed when we get into the, uh, the, the primary bedroom up front, but we'll cover that as we go. We'll show you the good with the bad with everything in between. Uh, let me know your thoughts, and if you appreciate the fair way that we look at things for you. Hit that subscribe button, and let's get started. So if you're a regular viewer, you are probably going to recognize this bedroom and bathroom arrangement. It's something that J-Flight uses several times uh, over and over. They just kind of change the back end of this thing. But if this is your first time joining us, I do want to make sure I, I uh, share a couple of those real key critical qualities, which I like the sound of that. Uh, that has some nice little alliterative sounding to it. One of the first things I want to touch on here in a J-Flight is that they're taller inside at six foot nine. Now there's some other campers that certainly have that, but uh, in this class, that's not a standardized thing. Now, it's got a 13,500 BTU central air normally. You can upgrade to a 15, and it's it's very inexpensive to do that. A lot of brands have actually standardized uh, the bigger air, and frankly, I think even here in the Midwest in Michigan, I, I don't think I'd ever regret having the bigger AC. We're looking at the lighter, brighter, modern farmhouse decor today, but there is the cottage decor if you prefer all the brown on browns. What you won't find in this, though, is carpeted flooring in walkable spaces. This is an all-carpetless system. And I do like how that uh, slide floor matches the main floor. It's just one of my personal things. Now, one of the things I talk about all the time is, like, you could get on Amazon or whatever, and if you don't like that pedestal-style table, you can get a pair of free-floating folding legs. And I bet if you just, if, if you search RV folding table legs, you'll come up with something very similar to that picture that I showed on camera there, assuming I remember to showcase the picture um, on camera. I have certainly made errors and missed things before. If I did, let me know. Maybe I'll do a quick search and run you or, or give you a, uh, an Amazon link or something like that. Anyway, now twisting around over here, it's definitely the kitchen where you'll find the biggest difference in the decor. The modern farmhouse, very obvious here versus the cottage browns. Uh, we're looking at the 12 volt DC compressor fridge today with that stainless steel front. That is a little over eight cubic foot in cold storage capacity. It uh, so it's larger than the six cubic foot two way fridge. It's faster cooling. It's completely travel safe in basically any circumstance. It also doesn't require an extra um, ventilation hole be cut up into your roof liner. So it's one less potential water penetration point, which is a nice flowery way of saying leaks. Um, that being said, it does use more power uh, off your batteries when boondocking as compared to a gas electric two-way. So they each have some advantages. We are doing a lot to offset that with Bishes, though, by uh, including more in Jayco's solar packages. We'll touch on that a little bit outside. We'll actually give you a look at it, uh, both in the bedroom and up on the roof. But for now, cracking everything open, taking a look at the storage here. In the hallway, big monster cabinet. That's either, it's going to kind of be, a, I think, a combination of pantry, closet, everything else. Storage all the way under the U dinette, which folds down into like a big seven foot sleeper. And you have storage under the standard sofa, but you also have a choice of a trifold hide bed and a theater seat. I don't personally see this as a floor plan where you're, you're buying this so that you can spend a lot of time inside watching TV because it is a bit of a 90 degree neck crank entertainment center. 
But at the same time, uh, you know, if you put yourself a little pivoting TV mountain here, I think you could probably get through a rainy day. Then again, I think a lot of us have all these various devices that we can use to help keep ourselves entertained when we're not over here at the family table doing some little family game day kind of stuff. So maybe you've got your little game day bucket go boom backup plan, as it were. Uh, I think we've covered the living room pretty well. I want to keep things rolling. Let's go check out the bathroom, shall we? Now, one of the first things I want to focus on in the bathroom is both one of this camper's greatest assets and its greatest liabilities. It's, it's both a positive and a negative, depending on what you're trying to do. Really good countertop space here in a, in a uh, fairly compact bathroom. That's fantastic. Plenty of room for, uh, you know, toothbrushes and whatnot. Down below that, we actually have a great spot for a, a place basket. <sighs> I couldn't decide if I want to say waste basket. Or, you know, like space for a wastebasket or place for... So what came out of my mouth was place basket. Yeah, you can place your garbage in there and I can place my career in that. Regardless. Remember I was talking about the countertops. Um, I quit, I swear. Well, I'm not a wide guy, but I am a taller, longer guy. And as you can see, it was a little bit tight around that toilet if you're somebody of my size and stature. So you might want to extrapolate that a little bit on yourself. I'm a little over six foot. So with that in mind, standing in the shower over here, I'm very happy to report the extra headroom. But once again, one of the things that's awesome about this, they put a monstrously sized shower pan in here. Um, if you, if, if you really got in there and you got to bathe a Doberman, you got the space to do it. One other neat little detail here, if you just need to escape for uh, a minute to have a little privacy space, enjoy a little iPad time, <laughs> you got a locking bathroom door right there. Now this back here, this is to me one of probably the greatest points, and it might be literally the single greatest, um, factor that you might consider if you're looking at purchasing this floor plan how it has four individual bunks and they are all 300 pound rated. So they are made for bigger people, uh, you know, heavier kids if need be. Notice too, we've got some great storage going right up the middle here in between. And there are TV hookups above that if you're so inclined. Um, I, I've only seen once or twice in my career where anyone's actually added a TV back here into the bunk room, but there's nothing that says you can't. And you might also notice they're using the thicker four inch mattresses in here as well. A little more comfort. I'd still throw a foam topper on it though. But I'm not going to turn a blind eye to something just because it's inconvenient, and I will always be forthright and candid with you to the greatest of my ability. You may have noticed how not every window in that bunk room opens for airflow. That might be another point of consideration for you. Uh, you know, I, I respect the fact that you work awful hard for that money, and I want you to know exactly what you're getting and what this RV offers and maybe what it doesn't offer so that you know if you're getting your second camper the first time. Because the thing is with Bish's, we carry so many different models. We could always find something that'll work for you. You know, you just let us know. Now, the uh, cabinetry in this, this is kind of a standout quality in this class. Only about half of other builders do it. It is pocket screwed. They're not using stapled cabinet styles, uh, which is uh, nice here. The uh, RV does have limited door side window coverage. And another thing here, again, telling you the good with the bad as I seem to be doing right now. That's a short queen. It's 60 inches wide. It's 74 inches long. There's room for a true queen. I kind of wish they would just put one in, but they're not. So if you wanted to put a true queen in, I do think that there's space for it. Uh, but, you know, eh, that's that's totally up to you folks, how you choose to kind of handle that. I do like that they're adding some extra lighting here into the bedroom. Instead of just, you know, one central light in the ceiling, one central light above the bed, they've doubled that up like Sir Mix-a-Lot to give us plenty of light and visibility here. Wide open side stands, great if you want have like a little stand fan or like I've always got a wireless phone charge pad next to my bed. It's just it's nice to be able to reach over, grab it, check the time, set it back down, whatever the case may be. Uh, looking down here, you may also notice how it's an easy lift bed storage area and these side uh, wardrobe towers right here. One is dresser storage for folded clothes and one is for hanging storage, which is kind of cool that they give you a little bit of a splitsy situation right there. Some people, a lot of people I've heard say, I don't need to be uh, hanging, uh, like I I'm camping. I I I'm wearing t-shirts and shorts. I don't need to hang a lot of clothes. Well, that might work for you there. And you could always put shelf organizers in that one if you're so inclined for more shelf space. All right, now as always, closing up the slide and giving you a look at uh, things here in road mode and being as candid as ever. I'm also going to tell you this is probably going to be a little bit more of a lengthy road mode segment than normal because this one 
isn't as obviously good or bad as the others. It's kind of a, a tweener. Most private rear bunk models have the same problem where the dinette comes up to the bathroom wall and it pinches everything off. But if you notice, this one doesn't fully make uh, wall contact right here. And my camera work's about to get wonky because I'm going to start doing some travel trailer sideways two steps and navigate my way through here. And if I do that, you see that you actually can get back here to the bathroom. And I'm bumping the camera on things. Again, it's tight quarters. Apologies. Uh, and the bunks in the back. Now, if you're any bigger than me, you're not going to make it. Uh, that That is as small of a, of a space as I'm able to Indiana Jones squeeze my way through. But little kids needing a potty stop or the bunks, they can do this. So I think it still warrants um, some consideration. The other thing here is this is a rack and pinion slide out. So if you only nudge it just a couple inches to give your adult size body a little more room to get through there, you won't screw anything up. But remember, when the slide is only partially open or closed, uh, well, actually, if the slide is anything but fully extended, you really shouldn't be uh, directly occupying it. So you don't want to like sit at that dinette, basically, if, unless the slide's all the way open. And it's that kind of extra detail I want to take the time to show you. I know that this was about a minute and a half of your life you're never going to get back. But if I was going to spend this kind of money, I know that I'd want to learn everything I could about it. And if you appreciate how we took the time and effort to showcase all that for you, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button, liked our video, or uh, left me a little note that says, hey, thanks, nerd. Now, I had this one all staged up and parked awful nice, but we're rearranging the lot currently. And uh, unfortunately, this Jayco is literally now living in the shadow of this big fifth wheel beside it. But hey, you know what? We're, uh, we're, we're Life gave us lemons. We're going to add some sugar and water and make lemonade, you know? It takes a little bit of effort, but it's going to be sweet in the end. Uh, what are we looking at here? So the new 23 exterior is very obvious to see because it has that smooth aluminum nose sweep. But one of the first things I want to talk about on here is that it does have a full true front pass-through compartment. And I actually think one of the very best ways for me to demonstrate that is to do my little David Blaine teleport over here onto the driver's side of the RV because this is the area that a lot of brands will cut the corner. Uh, you can see the Jayco is still giving us a big baggage door with magnet holdbacks on both sides, and a, it is a full true pass-through. Uh, you're not getting like, you know, uh, one big door on the uh, campsite and then a smaller door over here. They're very consistent that way. Uh, again, we are turn signal safety lighting and, uh, or we have rather, not we are, uh, we whatever, you know what I mean. Oh, why do I do these things myself? But we're, we're prepped and ready for both side and rear view cameras. Now, what's cool, they run two separate power lines to that. So when that uh, marker light is blinking with your turn signal safety lighting, your camera's not clipping in and out because those cameras actually feed their power off of the, uh, um, you know, the marker light normally. So Jayco runs a dedicated power line to those. Now, if we're talking to Jayco, I don't think we can do it without making at least a quick mention of their absolutely unrivaled best-in-class two plus three-year warranty. I've not seen another manufacturer in this category or frankly, most any category do that. Mr. Brandon Carr, how you doing, buddy? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Brandon Carr over here. Brandon's one of our sales team members here at a Coldwater, Michigan location. Brandon, what brings you over today? Um, to let you know your wife's here because your crotch is ripped. <laughs> <laughs> so in case anyone's curious he's not joking that is a factual statement um i tore my crotchular region of my shorts on a trailer today um and my wife was kind enough to bring me some new pants so brandon thank you for sharing that with us today everybody have a great day okay so yeah pants are changed i tell you what uh, in case you're wondering, yeah, I had a hole in my crotch the entire time I was recording this, and you had no idea. <laughs> Stay tuned to the end of this video. I'm going to go old school Hulkamania on these things, brother. <laughs> All right, so uh, RV nerd pantalones, uh, you know, aside, what else do we got here? Well, notice again the little details, like uh, the, the protected hinge on the baggage door. It's just a nice way to help keep wire from getting in there. And the fact that you're only going to ever need one key for this camper, one key to rule them all. Baggage door, entry handle, deadbolt, all one key. Uh, power awning with LED lighting, UV tinted windows is a nice touch, and standardized for the 23 season uh, are, are now the stable steps and the enclosed underbelly that you saw in our floor plan in a flash. Previously, those were available, but only as optional items. Notice too, our stovetop vent hood does exhaust that hot air outside, kind of like the hole in the front of my pants, but um, neither here nor there. 
little outside TV bracket ships with this. Doesn't ship with the TV inside or outside. But if you feel like adding a screen to it, it's just a quick little release thing. Um, and I've always wondered, had, has anyone ever done a DIY on this to like make it something other than a TV mount? Is there like a, a game or anything that like you've mounted on that? You just screwed a piece of wood to it. I'm just kind of curious. I'm looking for ideas maybe. Um, Goodyear Endurance Radials make it a comeback for the 23 season. They're 87 mile an hour rated. So they're not fit for the DeLorean uh, to go back in time but they are better than just about any other tire within this class and category. Now they have changed up their camp kitchen for the 23 season. Over on the right, you see that little black circle. That is the um, outside hookup for the cold water sprayer. They do not have a sink dedicated into the camp kitchen any longer, but they do now have double the drawerage uh, storage over here and some expanded counter space. Little outside refrigerator to uh, keep the bottled water and the barley pop nice and cool. And uh, they've standardized now, uh, it used to be optional, now it's standard, the griddle on this. Here's something I noticed though. It never even occurred to me before I saw this one that you could mount that griddle bracket on the top or bottom of that bumper. So depending on how tall or how small you are in Dr. Seussian uh, terminology, you could actually have that setting a little bit lower. And frankly, I think even at my height, I like it in the lower position. Um, it just it just feels a little more uh, readily accessible, you know? Uh, we are, uh, again, backup camera ready, but you see that we have the option for a full roof ladder. We'll peek at ourselves up there. One of the other neat things on this is that this is one of the only RVs, not, not even in this class, but other than Jayco, there's nearly no one else building these with plywood roof decking. And today we've been enjoying the benefit of that optional 200 watt solar package. Now what's cool about that, 200 watts is pretty decent. That should be enough to generally speaking um, offset that 12 volt fridge. Obviously that is going to be weather dependent and regionally dependent. But um, the uh, thing there is that has a 30 amp controller. Most stick and tin campers have like a 10 or 15 amp controller, so you can't really expand on it. Ooh, baggage door over here, a little compartment I forgot. But what I'm getting at is if you want to add additional solar onto the roof of this thing, it does have some expansion capacity, which I think is awful cool. And like I said, if there's a little pocket, I'm gonna show it. Not an ounce of space gone to waste. That's nerdism number one, two, three, four, five, uh, 37, if I'm keeping track. So underneath that bunk, they just utilized whatever space they could. You see over here, we have a black tank flush and a hot cold outside shower. Plus you have the cold water spray report on the other side. And this has a single stinky slinky hookup center right here. So you don't have to go cross juggling uh, hoses uh, on, you know, two or three different little hookups in one spot. And again, uh, enclosed underbelly, just kind of, not only is that adding a little extra protection, but frankly, it's also um, just giving you a, a little bit better down the road slipstreaming. Now, that being said, I doubt you can really identify any significant aerodynamic enhancement as a result of that, because frankly, these things are rolling bricks, and especially with all the surface area and that corrugated skin, uh, you know, it's not an aerodynamic dream by any means, but oh, hey, you know what? Let's talk towing. And this is probably something I should have talked about sooner. So like if you look at the dry weights and stuff on this camper, it reads very half ton towable. I'm gonna throw a button there and it's a big butt. <clears throat> My point is uh, it's a fairly long trailer. And what a lot of people don't realize is the longer the trailer, the more it will push around the vehicle going down the road. Think of it like getting a longer um, prop rod to move a big rock. Your, your vehicle is the rock and the trailer is the prop rod. So the longer this thing is, the, the more easily it can push the vehicle around. And I can get into more detail on that, but this is a camper. If you're in flatland, Southern Michigan, where the weather is very mild, where we don't get big hills and valleys, you might be able to half ton this very legitimately with a properly equipped half ton. There's always that caveat as well. If you're uh, hanging out with my, my friends over at some of our Iowa stores, or if you're going through the Rocky Mountains or something like that, you may definitely want to get more of a three quarter than just a, uh, a common tow package half ton. Now, opinions on towing can vary. You know, the tow police are probably going to come after me and give me a beat down in a few minutes here. I just want you to understand that there's, you can't just generally say it is or is not half ton towable. It really depends on a lot of factors. And if you want us to help kind of figure out if your specific vehicle or situation is conducive to half ton towing this or whatever vehicle, give our team a call. We'll make sure we put your safety before the sale.
So what do you think about the updates, everybody? Let me know, leave me some comments, even if it's just to say, hey, thanks for closing the slider, thanks for taking the time, or showing all the storage open, or whatever it is. Let us know what we're doing good for you, and hey, if you have any constructive ideas that uh, things I could do better for you, let me know that too, and I'll do my best. Um, here's a little pro tip for you. This is very true on Jayco's, but you can actually use this to give you some good approximations on other things. Um, get on your app store, and there's this thing called Jayco Sales Toolkit. And uh, what it actually is, it's a full-on spec guide. So like on their website, they, they publish some basic things like the holding tank capacities and the links and stuff like that. But in that spec guide, if you wanna know the size of like every seating setup, every sleeper, every bed or bunk or anything like that, there's tons of information on that that uh, potential uh, buyers or existing owners might find very useful. Now what's kinda cool is because of the standardization in the industry, if you find the measurements of this u dinette and you're looking at brand x y or z chances are the u dinette's going to be pretty similar so it can actually be really helpful even if you're shopping not just for jaco's which is kind of cool a little free tip there you, uh for you from your uncle josh to you so take care stay safe have fun and happy camping everyone it's time brother let's rip some pan oh yeah mean g we're gonna let these 27 inch pythons eat today brother here we go What do they make these out of? Kevlar? Oh, I yelled too much. I yelled too much. I, I'm, I gotta sit down. <laughs>